everybody has in mind the comparison. What are the similarities and differences between the classic force velocity and the in situ acceleration speed profile? First, the force velocity is a test. You need one linear sprint. So we could say it's semi specific. It is not football, but it is sprinting. And the in situ just needs football data, good GPS data. We say a minimum of six sessions. Okay. But it includes all types of movements and it is very football specific. You cannot be more specific. Okay. It was during football. So here, just the computation. Why do we say force velocity and acceleration speed? Just because to know the maximum force, you need to quantify the air friction. And it's pretty easy during a single test. And it's not easy at all during two weeks of football. So this is why we use A0. But as you can see here on the left, conceptually, when you express them in the same units, F0 and A0 are the same variable. It's your maximum force or the associated acceleration. And as you can see here, the air friction doesn't change much the story, but still it is not exactly the same. So as Einstein would say, you just count what counts for you. If you want to know the maximum sprint test capability, do a test. If you want to know the football acceleration profile, do a specific football acceleration profile. But for now, and this is the preliminary results I'm presenting you, um, so it is uh, data in progress. I would say that you don't want to analyze one profile from the other. It seems to be two quite different information. So the result that we had on 16 pro players, the linear acceleration speed profile is very, very high quality of linear fitting. You need at least six sessions of data to be sure to have every maximum acceleration throughout the speed spectrum. We have a pretty good inter-period reliability. So basically we compare two weeks of training to two weeks of training just after. And so the statistics are pretty good. And as you can see here, this is for one player, the in-situ profile for two weeks before a sprint test and the in-situ profile for two weeks after the sprint test. So of course they are not exactly the same because the two weeks of football were not exactly the same and the player himself was not exactly the same physically, but still we have very close data. So now the funny thing is that, and this is why you need a little of uh, wine or spumante, you answer some questions and many other questions come to mind. Is it reliable? As I said, we are doing the stats right now. How does it change with fatigue? Will I see the players changing with fatigue their acceleration speed profile? Does it change when you do small sided games, depending on the side of the games, depending on the uh, tactics? How does it change during the season? Is it different between players? Is it different between the positions? Some positions may have different acceleration speed profile than others. Does it change with tactical periodization? Uh, does it change with the playing style? If you are Jurgen Klopp or if you're another coach, do the players have different profiles when they play with you as a coach? Does it change after training blocks, after detraining? Does it change post injury? Well, Many, many, many questions. Uh, we are first giving the method, validating the method. And then, as I said before, for everybody, it's going to be time to play and time to observe. And this is what is very exciting.